Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Photography Academy Guest Top Talk webinar. Tonight, I'm going to be joined by Vanessa Joy, and we're going to be looking at weddings, and she's going to be giving her hints and tips on marketing and advertising. Hi, Vanessa. I believe I have you in the wings waiting for us. I am here. Glad to be here. Well, thank you so much for joining us. So we had an introduction from our friends at Animoto, which we'll be talking about later. But I'm thrilled that you're going to be helping us and telling our, our viewers tonight uh, some hints and tips about how, uh, how, uh, how you've sort of found the wedding industry and how you've been so successful that you are at today. Um, normally, I would ask you to introduce yourself, but I know that you're about to do that at the beginning of your presentation anyway. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to waste any more of uh, the, the viewers' times on my voice. I'm going to hand it over to you. So I'm just going to hand you the screen and I'll let you know when I can see it. Vanessa, it's all yours and you only hear me if I have any questions or any technical problems. All right, that sounds good. So uh, thank you guys so much for taking the time to join us today. Um, depending on where you are, either you're with me on the East Coast in New Jersey and it's rainy and gloomy and lunchtime, so this is a good break, or um, you're somewhere else in the world and hopefully enjoying some sunshine. But um, my name is Vanessa. And I am a wedding photographer in New Jersey. You can find my wedding work at VanessaJoy.com. And I do a lot with photography education and mostly, you know, business and marketing. It tends to be what I really just love, love, love about owning a photography business. So you can find all that type of information, free educational content, all my book recommendations at LearnPhotoVideo.com. But um, basically, I wanted to start out a little introduction about myself because I know I'm reaching a new audience and a lot of people who've never heard me speak uh, before. And quite frankly, you really should ask the question, how should I know? How should I know anything that I'm going to tell you? Um, why am I credible? So I wanted to give you just a little bit of background just so that you can trust me as a reliable resource as we go through this. Um, I've I've been in photography for 15 years. I've owned my own business since 2008, and I actually do marketing consulting on the side for photography as well as other people in the photography industry. So marketing is really, really my thing when it comes to owning a business. As far as how I've been successful in my own business, when I first started in 2008, it only took me three years to triple my pricing, and now I am one of the probably the highest paid uh, wedding photographers in my area. And it really has to do with the marketing because I'm not touting myself as the best photographer by any means. I don't think you have to be the best photographer in the world in order to be a very successful one. So I uh, consistently exceed all of my booking goals. Um, I am a boutique style studio, so I do roughly 20 to 25 weddings a year and my clients average um, around $10,000 each by the time uh, that they leave and, and are done you know, with their wedding and purchases with me. Um, I do get inquiries from every social media outlet. Social media is one of the world's biggest marketing tools right now. I, I mean, really is the world's biggest marketing tool right now. And I consistently get inquiries from everywhere from Google to Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, obviously. Um, so I'm really really casting a wide net and making sure that I'm doing marketing in all these areas and it is absolutely paying off uh, monetarily as well as bringing in just leads in general. So that's a little bit about me and my credibility and what I do and how, how I should know what I'm talking about here. <laughs> so my goal when we're talking about marketing, we're going to talk about a lot of different aspects here and my goal really is just for you to come away with two things. One, I want you to come away away with validation for what you are already doing. Hopefully you guys are already doing things that are working for you. Uh, maybe you're trying out new ideas and you just want validation that, hey, this is a good idea that I'm putting my efforts into. I also want you to come away from this webinar with brand new ideas. So those are my two goals for you to find validation in something that you're already doing, give you some encouragement, and then to give you some new ideas that you can implement into your business. So when it comes to marketing, this is the question that we all have to ask ourselves. How are you going to find your next client? And again, I started as a wedding photographer, but when it comes to marketing, it's like math. 
it's the same in every language. So whether you are a wedding photographer, portrait photographer, wedding planner, whether you're not a photographer or not even in the wedding industry at all, a lot of these concepts are exactly the same for you. So I do hope there are some of us that are listening here that are none of the above, not a photographer or maybe not even in the wedding industry because these concepts are absolutely static across the board. So when we're thinking about finding our next client, it can be so daunting, especially if you are in the world of photography. It is so saturated. It's a very saturated market. Maybe you're into video and that's becoming a very saturated market. And it's a little bit daunting trying to find your next client because the the pond, the you know, is full of fish now and there are so many people competing for the same type of clients. Um, I do like to talk really quickly when it comes to marketing first about finding time. A lot of us tend to not do the marketing that we need to do, whether it's in-person marketing, advertising, whatever it is, because we can't seem to find the time to do this. I want to go through this really quickly, just little tips and tricks as far as how I have found time to do marketing successfully. Um, First of all, definitely make sure that you are outsourcing anything that you possibly can when it comes to your business. Outsourcing is really important. Not only does it free up your time, but it actually betters your client experience. It betters your client's final product as well. How much better are your albums going to be if you have a an album designer doing them for you rather than you trying to pick up and learn album design when you don't like it and maybe aren't even nearly as good at, at album design as somebody that you would hire would be. So I do encourage everyone to outsource. I'll talk to you a little bit about what I outsource later just so you can get an idea of how I manage my time. And then streamlining tasks. There are two absolutely crucial and beautiful, beautiful workflow <laughs> tools that I have to help me streamline tasks. The first one that I have is Text Expander, and it really just helps you populate template emails really very quickly without having to go into a Word document and copy and paste emails, or it doesn't even have to be emails, it can be anything. Uh, instead, you're just typing abbreviations. So, for example, if I have a bride that inquires with me, I'm going to pretty much send every bride the same email back on on inquiry and all I type in my email response is capital I capital A for inquiry available and in pops my template for them. If I'm not available for the wedding I just type in all caps too bad and my I'm so sorry I'm already booked on your wedding date email pops in. So it's little things like that that are going to be helpful for you for streamlining the things that you need to do but don't have to spend that much time on or, or shouldn't be spending that much time on. And I put outsource here twice because a lot of people think the only thing that you can outsource is something to do with your business. When it comes to business, personal life, really in this world today, they just melt. And whether that's good or bad or it needs to be changed is another story. But the truth is, if you're creating time by outsourcing things in your personal life, that's just as effective as creating time by outsourcing things in your business life. So this is particularly how I was able to convince my husband that I didn't need to spend time cleaning my toilets anymore, that if I hired uh, help and you know, have uh, housekeepers come once a month, that that would be a fantastic use of our outsourcing dollars because then I could be spending that time going to lunch with a wedding planner instead. And it works. So. I encourage you to think of different things to outsource. As far as what I outsource, this is the list of the things that I outsource, my color correcting, album design, printing, and then I have a office manager that comes in and she does all my Facebook posting, blogging, sends out client gifts, and creates Animoto slideshows. So that's my list of all the things that I outsource. Figure out what you'd like to outsource so you can find the time to do all the marketing that we are going to talk about today. Um, this is my printing lab. I always just like to give them a hello because they do an awesome job. And I am going to talk about how I use 
certain things here like these thank you cards and luggage tags and uh, as far as what I do for marketing. So luggage tags are actually a very fun client gift that I give to my clients if I've done their engagement session, usually about a month before their wedding and I create little luggage tags for them to have on their honeymoon and they absolutely, absolutely love them. If you still can't find the time, I highly, highly suggest that you create a little chart like the one that you see here on the right. It helps you separate the things in your life with important, urgent, not urgent, or not important. Just helping you prioritize so that you can not spend time doing busy work or time wasters and you know try to ignore the interruptions and distractions and things that just aren't important you know right now um, do pay attention to the things that are obviously urgent and important things like kitchen fires and crying babies um, and also do pay attention to the things like exercise that aren't urgent but will sneak up on you later in life um, this i did get from a book and this is one of the books i'll be recommending while we chat here today this one is Entree Leadership by Dave Ramsey. He is a fantastic uh, business owner and knows a lot about marketing and leadership. You can get a whole bunch of promos and freebies. Um, I'd just like to talk about this ahead of time because I will be talking about a lot of different companies, uh, processes that I use, and I want to make sure that you have this right off the bat. I do have a lot of affiliate discounts that I can get you guys. I've worked out even with that text expander program. You can get, I believe, 20% off if you go to learnphotovideo.com and under the affiliate discounts link uh, on the top right there. So if you guys go there, lots of coupons, freebies, and, and promos. So let's go ahead and get into this beautiful thing that we call marketing. So I have this quote here from Gary Vaynerchuk. This is from his book, Jab, 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 Right Hook. And I love starting off with this quote because it's so powerful to me. Gary wrote a book called Jab, 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 Right Hook. And it is an absolute must read when it comes to social media marketing. And what was so fun about it is you read this entire book and you think it's done, and then he has this last chapter added on to the end. And what happened was he wrote about all different social media outlets, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapfish, whatever it was. And then all of a sudden, right when he was about, he had finished writing and he was about to get this book published and finalized, Instagram added video capabilities to the app. So now he had to go back right when he was on the brink of being done with such a huge project, go back and write a little something about being able to use video with Instagram and how powerful it was and what it did for marketing and things like that. And he wrote this in the last chapter in reference to that because the world is so so fast paced and it's constantly changing and he just said well I have bad news marketing is hard and it keeps getting harder but there's no time to mourn the past or to feel sorry for ourselves and there's no point in self-pity anyway it is our job as modern day storytellers to adjust to the realities of the marketplace because this sure as hell isn't going to slow down for us and I just felt that was such a good example of the fact that yeah, the world is moving fast, and yes, there seems to be a new thing we have to learn, a new social media outlet that we have to go sign up for and something new to do, but the truth is there's just no time to feel sorry for ourselves or complain about it. We just have to get up and do it and learn it, and it's part of being a business owner in today's market. So let's get going into these ideas here. I like starting out uh, with just real trends um, and talking about what types of marketing actually work. And the chart that you see here on the right is directly from my client management program. I very, very accurately track where my leads come from. If you are not currently tracking where your leads come from, please start immediately. If you're if you don't know what type of marketing is actually working for you personally, then potentially and most likely you are throwing money away into marketing that actually works, actually work and really work and not work and not spend in marketing that does work for you. So please make sure that you are keeping track of where your leads and bookings are coming from. I use a program called Tave, T-A-V-E.com. It is just a photographer's 
client management system that works really well. Um, so it's really no secret as far as what works here. You can see previous client at the top there really just tripling and trumping any other type of marketing that I am doing currently. So that's previous clients talking about me, whether they talk about me in person, whether they're on Facebook sharing my photos, whatever it is, previous clients and referrals is absolutely my number one way of creating business and we'll talk about how I get my clients to talk about me. Secondly, I have vendors that talk about me. I am very fortunate to be married to a filmmaker who also does weddings, so yes, I definitely get referrals from him. But there are a lot of other people I get referrals from, vendors, florists, wedding planners. Um, having them talk about me is just as valuable as having your previous clients talk about you. And then I have referrals and friends, just people who are friends with me on Facebook that know I'm a wedding photographer and know I'm a pretty good wedding photographer because of how I have an online presence and a presence on social media as being as such that I am in their brains when their friends get married and engaged and they can uh, say, hey, I, I know a photographer and, and recommend me. Google search, you can see, is my number three right there. And that is actually getting higher more and more lately because of my SEO. I've been getting inquiries just straight off Google. And um, we'll talk about ways to enhance that with you guys. And then online wedding networks, things that you actually pay for, like Wedding Wire, The Knot, et cetera. Um, they're definitely worth mentioning. Wedding Wire is my um, choice place to market, and I'm not too sure about their presence in other parts of the world outside of the U.S., but I'm sure there are different advertising websites type, you know, basically online wedding phone books or whatever your industry is, phone books where people can find you, digital phone books. So this is the type of marketing that actually works. This word of mouth, it is definitely by far the most prevalent. So what is word of mouth? How do you actually create word of mouth? I always feel that even when I'm saying it right now, I feel so cliche. Oh, well, word of mouth, and that's what works, and duh, because we hear it all the time. But the truth of it is you have to find out how to create that for you and your business. And with previous clients, one of the ways that I like to create it is with a same-day slideshow. Uh, any type of surprise that I give my clients, and I talked about the luggage tags, I do give my clients surprises throughout their experience with me. So one of the things I give them when they first book with me is a book. It's called 10 Great Dates uh, Before You Say I Do. They love it. It just shows that I'm interested in them and their relationship. I also send out a gift before the wedding. Like I mentioned, the luggage tags, and then I also send them a cute little beach bag. That's a good honeymoon bag also. Anything essentially that you can do that gives that wow factor to your clients, something that you can do that goes above and beyond. I was having this conversation with a friend of mine the other day. Your clients absolutely 100% expect to get what they're paying for for you. They're not going to rant and rave about you giving them what they're paying you for. If you go into a restaurant and you sit down and you get okay service and you get the food you ordered and you pay your bill and you walk out, it's not going to be the type of experience that you're going to rant and rave about to all of your friends. But if you go to a restaurant and they give you a little something extra, maybe a little something special from the kitchen, you know, whether it was an extra appetizer or a, a refill on a drink, or you had exceptional service or the best waitress in the world or a discount or a coupon for your next visit, whatever it is, anything that is above and beyond what you're expecting and what your clients are expecting, that's what's going to make them talk about you. Social media is an absolute no-brainer at this point, and I'm going to give you specifics on how I make sure that I'm interacting with my clients on social media so that they can talk about me there as well. So same-day edits, when it comes to the same-day edits, I always say that there's nothing better that you can do for your business than to do your best work and to let everyone see it. In honesty, you can do your most mediocre work, and as long as everyone sees it, it's going to benefit you in some way. 
when it comes to my clients, I love giving them same day edits. You can see pictures from weddings where I'm giving them a same day edit slideshow just on the digital picture frame there. And the bride at the top is holding the same day album that I give them. This has been my, by far my most effective way of creating a wow factor. I don't tell my brides about this. They don't know that they're going to see some of their wedding images the night of the wedding and definitely don't know that they're going to get a little album, a little bride book to bring around to work that next week or enjoy on their honeymoon with their, their new the new hubby, but it is really fantastic because if I do amazing work or mediocre work and I don't let everyone see it, especially now when instantly people are Instagramming and Facebooking pictures from the wedding on their cell phones, if I'm not anywhere near that pile of pictures, it's not going to help my business. But if I am there, then that can really do a lot. So just a little bit about same-day edits so you can have a definition as far as what I do for same-day edits that has worked so well. Traditionally, it is simply a slideshow at the reception, which is great. Start there. That's where I started. But for me, and I do have an assistant that helps me with it, I do all of these fabulous things. <laughs> Oh, let's go back so you can actually see those. Um, so I have a slideshow. I give them a same-day album. And then everything after that same-day album, yes, it's a wow factor for my clients. But it is also starting my workflow for the next week and the things that most people spend their time the next week doing, like uploading pictures to Facebook and tagging the vendors and clients, creating an online gallery, creating an Animoto slideshow, finishing a blog post, submitting the photos for publication, and we'll talk about that, and second photographer photos, having them acquired. So this is what I do when it comes to same-day edits. You don't have to do all of this, but I do like to give you a little bit about what I do. And then if you want to see an entire checklist about how I do this and how I, what tools I use, what printer I use for the same day edit and things like that, you can just go to vanessajoy.com forward slash SDE for same day edit. And that will help you uh, just take a little glimpse as far as what I've done. I can honestly say that if I decided to not do any other type of marketing whatsoever that my business would absolutely be sustainable by just doing these same day edits. And that's a powerful statement to say uh, in today's uh, day and age. So same day edits are my number one marketing tactic. We're going to talk a little bit about social media next. When it comes to social media, I think one of the most daunting things that we talk about or we have to do is just posting to all these different places. First it was just Facebook and then Twitter and then there was Google Plus and Pinterest, Tumblr, Instagram and it's so, so, so much and it can be extremely irritating when you're trying to have a presence and cast that wide net in order to scrape up as many fish as you can and to have good brand recognition across all mediums. So every post is an app that I use. You can find it at everypost.me. And it is an app that lets you write and customize posts for multiple social media networks. So you can add text and photos and videos and links and things like that. But what's nice about it is, let's just say you have a picture that you want to share from a wedding. You can share that picture and schedule it to post later in the week, later in the month, whatever you want. Sometimes I've scheduled social media posts months in advance, so you can schedule them. And I like this better than Hootsuite because I believe Hootsuite doesn't have as many social media uh, forums integrated into there, so this one is my favorite. The one that's not in here is Instagram, so basically when I post via social media, I'm using every post and then I am just posting to Instagram on more of a daily basis, but this pretty much covers all of that. Um, you can save your contents right to Dropbox, so if you want to use it as a way to quickly save storage methods or save your favorite photos or whatever it is, you can do that as well. So this is one of those other streamlined task uh, items that I use. Let's talk a little bit about Facebook. Now, a lot of you will probably moan and groan when it comes to Facebook 
especially with where it is right now, and a lot of people think it's going downhill, and I wouldn't say it's going downhill because recent research suggests that one out of every five windows that are open on a desktop computer in an internet browser goes to Facebook, so having a fifth of the market share is pretty good when it comes to internet surfing. But the demographics of Facebook are absolutely changing as far as who's using Facebook. Teenagers, not so much on Facebook. So if you're advertising to teenagers, that might not be where you want to go. But if you're advertising to brides like I am, women between the ages of 22 and 30, let's just say, are absolutely still on Facebook. So it is relevant. And moms are absolutely on Facebook. So if you are really advertising to women or anyone over the age of, I would say, 22, 23 right now, Facebook is where they are. So this is my Facebook plan when it comes to the Facebook marketing. I have a sort of hit them five times method because marketing definitely has to do with branding. You want to make sure that you are not just having one post for each client, but having repetitive but not annoying posts on Facebook for them to be able to interact with you, share with their friends and family. So the night of the wedding is when I post about 60 to 80 of their pictures from the same day edit, and that's the first time I have interaction with them on Facebook. For the wedding, uh, I also do this for engagement sessions as well. The Animoto slideshow, I will actually email to my clients and ask them to post it because more of their friends will see it if they post it rather than if I just post and tag them in it. Uh, Animoto actually is giving us a 20% off deal. You can use the coupon code Vanessa UK to grab that. I'm not entirely sure if that's good for just renewals or for new clients, but check it out. I make a timeline banner just like the picture that you see here on the right. Um, so I will upload that, tag them in it, and then my clients put it as their cover photo, which is great because it'll be the first thing that really pops and that people see the night or uh, when their friends go to their Facebook pages. I do a blog post with most of my clients, uh, pretty much all of them. Sometimes I have a client or two that I just don't put on the blog for one reason or another, but I will email my clients the blog link and tell them, hey, if you're famous, you know, go ahead and share this around, and I'll do that on Facebook. I also do a happy anniversary post, and because Facebook allows me to schedule about six months in advance right now, it's really easy to just every quarter, every five months or so, write a whole bunch of anniversary posts and schedule them for the day of the anniversary of my couples. The only thing I would caution is just make sure that your couple is still married. Um, and it sounds pretty disheartening, and it is disheartening, but um, it is the truth, and you obviously want to be sensitive to things like that. So I have had it happen to me personally, so please just caution uh, if you're going to do something that far away from the wedding that it is still a, a relevant post, we'll just say. A few tips on posting on Facebook. Time of day is absolutely one of the most important things, and this goes for all social media as well. You can actually Google if you want to take a look and see what type of stats there are for each social media network and when does each network have the most activity, when are people usually looking at on Facebook, when are they usually looking on Instagram, and you can see that that's a general idea of when the media, media outlet is getting the most activity, but you also want to take into consideration your demographic of who it is that you're trying to reach. So if you are a portrait photographer and you focus on families and newborns, when does mom have time to go on Facebook or any social media network? When the kids are sleeping. So that's going to be earlier in the morning or later at night. If you're a wedding photographer like I am, my brides tend to take, take a little Facebook break during their lunch break at work. So when I post, and you can look on my Facebook, you'll notice that I post around noon Eastern Standard Time. So take into consideration the time of day when you post. When you post, vary 
posts that are just text, just links, and just photos. So by burying these, you get a better chance of Facebook putting them into people's feeds because Facebook and the algorithms and how they determine what types of posts go into people's feeds, they will want to vary it so that when you go to look into your Facebook news feed, you're not seeing all photos or all links or all text. So they try to vary that and you should too. Definitely interact on Facebook, whether it's in groups, whether you're interacting with your brides. I do try to get on there and write happy birthdays, little things like that do make a difference. And it shows that you're interested in basically things other than yourself on social media, which I think is important. Some people like to separate business versus personal, and that's absolutely entirely up to you. I'm not going to have too much of a debate about it right now. but. Make sure that you have a strategic plan for that and decide whether you want to do everything together, whether you want your clients to see your personal life or just your business. And again, that book, Jab, 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 Right Hook, is a great tool. Uh, take a look at it. It actually gives you Facebook posts, some that are good, some that are bad, so that you can look at them, evaluate them, and then try to create something that's effective for you. One of the biggest complaints that people have about Facebook is that, well, I'm posting, but no one's looking at anything because Facebook has decided they want me to pay in order to get my posts up there in people's news feeds. And yes, it's annoying. However, it's also beneficial because what we can do is we can experiment, like I did with this picture on the right. We can experiment with certain marketing tactics or pictures or graphics and see what's actually the most effective. Post three different graphics or wording or whatever you want to do when you're having your next sale and you want to announce it on Facebook and actually look and see which one is the, remote, the most responsive, got the most likes, got the most clicks or the most views and then choose that one to boost. And then when you boost it, you can boost directly to a demographic. So it's not like when you would have to take out TV ads and you know on TV you just market to absolutely everyone whether they're your client or not. Now you can spend your marketing dollars marketing towards people that are your ideal client in your demographic and it really can be a powerful tool when you're using it correctly. We're going to chat just a brief second about Pinterest. Pinterest is one of the newer social media outlets that I've been using, I have been using it actively for probably about a year now, but if you have a woman client, ideal client, they're 100% on Pinterest, so you want to be there as well. Pinterest is used for ideas and inspiration, so you ideally want to post things that are going to give other potential clients, other people, ideas and inspiration. This is easy for you if you are a photographer because any detailed picture you take, any cutesy engagement session, pretty much any picture you take at a wedding or anything at all can be an idea or inspiration. A lot of companies have to pay to have these photos taken that are going to be inspirational to put on Pinterest and that's what we get paid to do. So we're kind of one step ahead. Pinterest should be a no-brainer. It is a photo medium and we need to take advantage of it. Whenever you're posting on Pinterest, just make sure you link back to your website or your blog. Uh, if you don't, then people will pin it and, you know, you could have your watermark on there, so maybe they'll see that, but ideally you want to be able to just let them click on it and get to your website or blog. Have a call to action as well, so you can see if you look to the top right, second one over, it says how not to ditch your wedding kicks, and my call to action there was for them to read a blog post I wrote about how not to ditch your wedding kicks. So ideally, you want to have your Pinterest, but get them back to your storefront, your blog, your website. And you can get your clients involved. I let my clients know, hey, I have an engagement session outfit ideas board. Go ahead and take a look at it and get them pinning and, and liking your, your pins. And it doesn't have to 100% be your work. So I'll pin things that are on there. If you go to Pinterest.com forward slash Vanessa Joy Photography, I think it is, 
Um, you'll see I have recipes on there and different house pictures and hair pictures and all sorts of stuff. So other things that are interesting that people will want to follow you in order to see is important and useful as well. Google Plus. So Google is simply just taking over the world, <laughs> and we have to accept that. Um, your search engine optimization is affected by Google Plus. So what that means is Google simply likes its own stuff. So if you don't have a Google Plus account, uh, a places one, and I think yeah, I have a pages versus personal here, you want to have a pages or places Google Plus account and that is going to help you have basically a, a storefront on Google Plus and you want to get your clients to review you on there, you, to post there, be interactive on there because Google likes that. Google likes you using their own social network essentially. And your search engine optimization is very, very important. Um, I don't have a huge amount on search engine optimization in, in here because it is an absolutely separate field. But if you, um, you can, there are so many places to learn it. And I'm sure Jay could probably even tell us there's a webinar or two on it in the, the Photo Academy. But Google Plus and having a page there and engaging there is very, very important. So if you don't have a Google Plus page, go for it. And make sure that you're filling out the description with certain keywords that if someone is searching rustic wedding photos that hopefully you will come up there. Or for me, it's New Jersey wedding photography or maybe some not so obvious keywords like intimate wedding photos or something along those lines. But make sure you're putting little keywords and phrases in your Google Plus description like that and it will help your SEO. In all of these different areas and all of these social media networks, you can search for conversations. And I got this idea from uh, Gary Vaynerchuk's other book, Why Now is the Time to Crush It just call it crush it. And this is an idea that he has in that book. And what it is is you go onto these social media networks and you find relevant hashtags. Let's just take Instagram, for example. If you go onto Instagram and you look in the hashtags and you type in engaged or engagement ring, you will find a ton of pictures of brides who just got engaged. <laughs> and that's fantastic. What you don't want to do at that point is to comment on all these photos of people who just got engaged, say, hey, when you're looking for a wedding photographer, here I am. That looks a little spammy. But you can just write a nice comment on there and just say, gorgeous ring, love that ring, beautiful, congratulations, whatever you want. And potentially, they see you, they check out who you are, and maybe they look and, and they follow you. So you can do this on pretty much any social media network, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Google Plus, Instagram, and just join in conversations. When you're joining in a conversation, set up a first impression. So what I mean is if you decide, hey, today I'm going to go on Instagram and I'm going to congratulate a few people who just got engaged by searching that hashtag, you don't want the first picture that's in your Instagram to be a picture of, I don't know, your Memorial Day weekend where you guys were all out partying and drinking and enjoying fireworks. Your first impression is going to, you're going to want it to be something a little bit more relevant to what you're doing and definitely a little bit more professional. I'm not saying that you shouldn't put personal things on social media. I think there's actually a big benefit to putting personal items on social media. I put my pictures of my dog or pictures of some friends or food or whatever myself. But if you know that you're going to do a marketing effort like searching for conversations, then maybe set up a first impression that's going to be a little bit more effective and tell more of a story about who you are and what you do. Blogging. Blogging is absolutely still a relevant task. I'll call it a task because for photographers, we are not necessarily writers. So blogging can be a task, but it is absolutely important because it really boosts your search engine optimization and it gives your clients and potential clients a place to go to continually be updated uh, with original content. 
Um, so you can just have a few ideas. If you're not shooting a lot, that's okay. Every blog post does not have to be your latest shoot. It does not have to be just pictures. And well, it shouldn't be just pictures, and we'll talk a little bit about that. You can do other blog posts, like maybe a vendor feature. So feature a local florist by you and showcase a few of the florist photos that you've taken at a recent wedding and write nicely about them. You can allow guest posts. I have allowed other people to write little articles like how to choose your wedding colors and or you know how to accessorize your wedding dress and you're allowing other people to essentially cross promote with you, write a good blog that's going to have original content and boost your SEO and it's going to be informational, informational for your potential clients and clients. So guest posts are really great, plus then you're not doing the work yourself. So that's always very helpful. Make sure that whenever you do have a blog post, you're posting that on social media, just a little preview, like this picture that you see on the right was the one that we saw on Pinterest, how not to ditch your wedding kicks. So I posted that on social media and linked back to my blog. You want to make sure that your blogs are informational and creative. Um, so again, we're photographers, writing might not be our thing. However, you do want to make sure that you have text there. So if you're doing something like an engagement session, what I've done recently, if you look at any of the recent engagement sessions on my blog, I have my clients answer this cute little questionnaire about them, their relationship, and I post that along with their engagement pictures from the shoot that we did together on my blog so that I have text there because people wants, wants, to, wants to see, to see, it's not going to help push you to the top and to that first page of Google. So make sure that you're combining text with those photos. And then take a look at your stats and actually see what is in here. 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 has integrated right in there ways where I can look and see what are my most popular blog posts, you know, how many views does a particular blog post or even whole blog have today, and take a look at it. It's just as important as tracking your leads when they come in. If you don't know what's working, you're probably putting your effort into something that isn't working and nobody wants to waste their time. Vendor networking, if I was going to have a number two next to the same day edits of the things that I would do next after, after same day edits for my marketing efforts, it would definitely be vendor networking because creating relationships with vendors is very, very invaluable. So getting involved with your local photography or wedding groups or whatever industry that you're in. I. When I first started my business in 2008, the first two weddings that I ever booked, one was referred to me from a DJ and the other one from a photographer who happened to already be booked on that wedding day. So there are lots of places that you can get involved, local photography groups, industry mixers, educational events, or heck, nothing going on, host an event yourself, even as something as simple as getting together with a bunch of people for coffee and start a referral network that way. I like the idea of give, give, give when it comes to vendor networking. So I like to give my reception halls albums if I can afford it. They are expensive. I do give people like florists, uh, reception halls as well, or wedding planners, brochures with their work on it that I have photographed. I give Animoto slideshows. And recently I've been doing sticky albums, which you can see there on the right. And it's basically a way where I create an app for the vendor, their contact information, their logo, but my photos and my logo is on all the photos. So it's a way where I can create something and give them an app that they can share with their clients that's also promoting myself and my work as well. And that's another freebie that you can get at learnphotovideo.com. Sticky Albums is giving you $40 off under the affiliate discounts. So that's my newest one, Sticky Albums, and it's been working pretty well. It's a, a lot of fun. If you have any problems when it comes to vendor networking, a lot of them tend to stem from the fact that, well, photographers just aren't that outgoing a lot of times. So I recommend this book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. 
And ideally, if I were to sum it up, it's just stop talking, and that's how you make friends. <laughs> you stop talking, you start listening, you smile, and you find ways where you can serve them. Ask them questions. What are they into? What's going on? How can we um, find ways to collaborate together and, and find ways to cross-promote, essentially, and find ways where you can serve and give to them? I talked a little bit about guest posting, but I did want to sort of give you the other angle when it comes to guest posting. So you can either have people post on your blog, like this one you see on the right, Tips for Choosing Your Wedding Colors, um, or you can post for other people. I have posted on Style Me Pretty. Uh, a, article that I wrote about selecting a wedding album. So obviously all the same things when it comes to writing a blog are the same here. So incorporate into social media, make sure that you cross promote, make sure it's full of your photos, it's informational, and it's great for SEO and link backs. Style shoots is just a quick tip that I have. Um, as far as different things that you can do that will actually promote your photography itself, style shoots are great, especially if you're just starting out and your part portfolio is not as vast as you would like it to be. Style shoots are where you essentially set up a shoot with other vendors, florist, wedding planner, whatever it is, and you make a mock wedding shoot. You can show what you want to track, so you create a shoot where you are photographing the type of bride that you actually want to photograph, and you'll essentially attract that same bride. Ideally, you get style shoots published, and I do recommend avoiding excessive style shoots, but they can be very, very helpful. On getting published, it's definitely something that I recommend. As far as getting published, it builds credibility, generates leads, it's free advertising, it's good for SEO if you're getting published on blogs, and your brides absolutely love it. It creates network opportunities and then obviously boosts your confidence. There's really nothing bad I can say about getting published. It's 100% fantastic. Quickly on ways to get published, number one, you just want to take the right photos. So make sure you're taking photos of the bride and groom, take photos of the guests, but most importantly for publishers, it's just details, details, details. Little thing on exclusivity when it comes to publications, just know the rules. Sometimes you can get work published in multiple blogs or magazines, other times that blog or magazine wants to be the only person who has that wedding. So just be honest and don't risk ruining the relationship. Keep that in mind. How to submit. This is really what I do. 80 to 100 images, 80% are details. Anything with a fresh idea or a unique story. And I like to submit using twobrightlights.com. If you're choosing where to submit, Think of your publication aesthetics, your audience. Um, so think about if you want to find rustic brides, don't submit to punk rock weddings. <laughs> and same goes for the other way around. Just consider your audience. Some people give you an advertiser advantage and will publish you if, or more likely publish you if you're an advertiser. And then you, of course, have the decision of blog versus magazine. Magazine tends to be more credible, but blog will give you higher SEO. You also want to consider the prestige level, audience ranks, just other things that to consider when you're considering where to submit. And I always just like to give a little encouragement here. Just don't give up. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It's the courage to continue that counts. Just to give you an idea, I get rejected. Just today, I got two rejections from Style Me Pretty on two beautiful weddings that I thought they would absolutely love and publish. But Keep going. When it comes to charity work, I know we're going to go. Let's see what time it is. I'm a smidge over, but we should be uh, we should be good and answer some questions. But uh, I do like to talk about charity work because it's a great marketing idea. You can shoot for free with places like HelpPortrait.com. You can organize a fundraiser, give away a wedding, donate your profits. Um, like this company here, LightroomRetouching.com. It's a company that really has 
it's a photography company. It helps you retouch your photos in Lightroom just like you would in Photoshop. But they have a 5% story where they're giving 5% of their profits away to Operation Smile. So it's a way where you can donate your profits. You can shoot for free by doing a documentary. My husband just went Costa Costa Rica, Costa Rica, Costa Rica, there. Whatever you decide to do, charity work can absolutely be beneficial. Just make sure that you're being genuine as well. I think that's actually more important when it comes to charity work. Find something that does speak to you and that does means something to you and it's something that you want to be a part of and you want to donate and it yes will absolutely help marketing efforts but will also help your soul as well. With all of these things when it comes to marketing I do like ending with thinking about the compound effect because the compound effect really is is the culmination of all of these efforts. You know, you're casting that wide net, you're doing all this branding. It can be very daunting and difficult, but the compound effect and having all these things come together to create a successful marketing strategy for you is what makes it work work for you. And you want to make it work for you and not against you. So Basically, the compound effect of doing nothing is going to compound into not having a very successful business. So make it work for you. Work on your business. So work on your marketing, not necessarily in your business, things like culling images and answering emails. So make sure that you're spending the time working on your business. You're essentially setting time aside for things that don't pay off short term, but will long term. And I like to add in here that Busyness can be a form of laziness, and I think Tim Ferriss first said this. Just don't occupy your days with things that make you busy that aren't necessarily that are things that are going to be beneficial. A lot of times we put off certain tasks and claim we're too busy when we just really need to do those those certain things that are looming over our heads. Um, I wrote a whole article, a two-part article on this. If you go to BehindTheShutter.com, the online magazine there has a whole article on the compound effect and how you can make it work for you and your business, particularly when it comes to marketing and lifestyle. And then finally, just be remarkable because all of these marketing efforts, compound effect, everything isn't going to do very much if you're not focusing on being remarkable and being remarkable just means being you. What is your fascination factor? What is it that separates you from all of your competition? If you go to howpeoplesee.com, I believe that's it, or maybe if you just Google how people, how the world sees you might be uh, what you can Google. There's actually a test where you can fill it out. It's sort of like a personality test, but instead of telling you how you see the world, it tells you how the world sees you so that you can use those things as strengths. And you are remarkable, so when it comes to your business, it's you that's different. So work on what it is that creates or gives your clients the sense of knowing you and liking you better than other photographer XYZ because that difference, that strength is what's going to make all of your marketing more potent. All right, so we're a little bit over, but I love giving lots and lots of information. <laughs> you certainly did, and thank you so much. Uh, I, I know I said I was going to interrupt, uh, but I couldn't find, I didn't want to stop your flow. And I was making loads of <laughs> notes, because uh, I've learned loads, which has been absolutely fantastic. I do have questions, so yeah, I'm happy to stay with us for a little bit, I believe. That's okay, yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to kick off straight with uh, social media. Uh, I knew there was going to be a lot of questions on it. Do you think any are better than others? Because you've covered so many of them tonight. I would say the two that are, or I would say one, if nowhere else, would be Pinterest. Um, and that's just for my clients because Pinterest is just where wedding, where brides go to help plan their wedding. So it depends on what, what company you have. But if you're a photographer and a wedding photographer, Pinterest, all your brides are there. It's amazing. I, I was thinking, we don't do Pinterest here at the Photographer Academy, but I guarantee you I'm going to. 
uh, we we look at it all the time, and I've not adopted it mm -hmm. into the business. And I guarantee you that Mark and I will be sitting down next week, and it's going to happen. Um, and I don't know why we haven't done it because as soon as you started talking about it, everything made complete sense to me. And I've just written it down in big black mark of Pinterest. That's going to happen. So that that will yeah. definitely happen. Google Plus, you touched on. It's weird uh, from a British point of view, and I know a lot of the people yes. with us today. It's not as big over here, but I do believe it's growing. But to working with yourself and 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 our some of our American sponsors, it is a really big thing over there, and it is sort of growing here. But Facebook seems to be the thing here. Do you That's do you great. see? Yeah. Sorry, it's all your sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> Go ahead with the. Uh, with so, so I mean, you know, I, I agree with you about Facebook. I mean, we, we do a lot of business preaching on Facebook, and if you get it right, uh, one of our teachers, um, Michelle Spack, she, she's grown a fantastic you know, portrait business on Facebook, with Facebook, uh, and I still believe that works strongly here. Um, should they invest as much time in your belief, then, do you think, in Google Plus? I would say if Facebook is what's popular in your area right now, then that's where you should be. Yeah. It's constantly changing. So, I mean, three months from now, I don't know if somebody might come and trump Google, and I, I doubt it. But it really is just knowing where you are and monitoring what is popular and what you can utilize. Some, somebody asked early on, I think it's right back at your presentation, you were talking about uh, a text generation software. I, I, I missed that. What, what was that? Oh, that is Text Expander. A uh, question about your blog then, Vanessa. Do you blog straight from your website or do you have a separate blog site? I have a separate blog site and there are arguments on what's beneficial for, for each of those options. Yeah, we do as well, uh, uh, but we've actually thought about integrating it. It's different, slightly different for us, but um, the, the other benefit, I suppose, is there are so many good uh, free blogging systems out there that you can customize. And, and I mean, we use Blogger. You know, the Photography right. Academy blog site is Blogger, and so it's not costing any, and, it, and it, we can make it look like our site, and we can integrate it uh, nicely. Uh, but we've th thought about it, but we haven't. Uh, so we're just just a general query on that. Uh, great that you mentioned sticky albums. It's something that we've just adopted over here as well uh, that okay. we use for our portrait business. Um, and so we've uh, an app that we have fallen in love with. So you talked about, which was interesting to me as well, um, that you you create uh, you know same day edits uh, on your weddings. How are you present? How are they presented at the end of the day? Then how do you present them on your weddings? I use a digital picture frame, which is usually ready around dinner time, and I just throw it on a cocktail table in the corner of the reception room and let people discover it. I also give them a same day album. It's a four by six self mount album that I just print and hand it to them during the reception. Oh, brilliant! Okay, that's fantastic. Uh, I presume it's weird because I, you, I saw some of your slides, and um, it was very familiar to some of like the event photographers that we work with. Uh, I, I haven't experienced an American wedding, and I have been told that they they run slightly differently. Because you, you guys get quite a lot of time with the bride and groom for their photography, right? You know, it depends. Um, I sometimes have an hour with them. Two weekends ago, I had five minutes. <laughs> okay. So it sounds just like the same over here, then ignore what I said, it's exactly the same as us. <laughs> um, do you have any uh, tips and tricks for, um, I presume, I, we haven't really talked about uh, your after sales, but how to market to the friends and family to boost sales? Yes, um, so one of the things that I, I do occasionally, if I do an engagement session with a couple, I'll create little business cards, they don't look like business cards, they're just the size of business cards that have a variety of pictures of the couple from their engagement session on one side and then on the other side it has a link to the online gallery where they'll be able to find the pictures from the wedding and I've put them on tables or I've put them next to the same day at a slideshow and that definitely helps as well as when I let my clients know that their proofs are ready I send them a link and they share it online. And uh, so you're on uh, Smug Mug, are you using Smug Mug? I saw it on your links. Like yes. same same as us, yeah. I mean, I think Smug Mug when we got involved with them just sort of kind of changed our our working uh, 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 
our ethic, if you like, and it, it's been a fantastic for, for the after sales, especially with friends and family, uh, and the proof Absolutely. elements. Are, yeah, brilliant tool that is. So, um, and again, uh, we get a, Vanessa has a, an affiliate there with Smug Mug, as, as do we if you're a Photographer Academy member. So, well worth checking out Smug Mug if, uh, if you're looking into that sort of thing. So, um, there's loads of questions about where best to market and how to market if you know you were starting out Vanessa and you know you know money's a money's tight where, where would you ultimately start what's the best practice to market your, your wedding business do you think I would start with vendor networking I would start with getting to know the people in your industry that you can collaborate with and and form a referral network Brilliant, uh, and that would be our advice uh, from our from the business that we created here. Absolutely, uh, been quite a lot of interesting questions about people who are starting out, um, wanting to be able to create portfolios and not having the wedding, uh, the weddings uh, in the bag, if you like, to do that. Uh, any advice on, on getting a portfolio together? I, I know we've got some hints and tips on that, but uh, any from, from yourself? Yeah, they can do those style shoots, and again, I wouldn't recommend excessive style shoots. You shouldn't have a whole website of them, but do style shoots where you're arranging a mock wedding setup, essentially, um, or you can do some things where you're shooting for free, um, or work with a photographer and second shoot with them and find one that doesn't mind you using their images for their portfolio. They can be hard to find, but I, I'm one of them. I let my second shooters use their images for their portfolio. Yeah, uh, that's exactly the tips and tricks that we, we share with the Photographer Academy, um, and that's what we would advise. It's slightly different here, and I'm sure it's the same, though, in the U.S. or wherever you are in the world. We can we use uh, the, the model sites, and we ask them for time for, for, time for you know, for prints, um, and, you know, we'll, we'll actually mock up the shoots, like, like Vanessa has suggested. And as you said, get the vendors involved. We work with a, with a bridal dress designer here in the UK, in, where we're based in Cardiff, and um, she'll always want in images of, of her dresses shot for, for advertising. So there are ways to do it without, without expense, apart from obviously time and a bit of organization. But that would be the advice that we would give as well on that. Absolutely. Um, how do you uh, combat, uh, and it's a big question over here in the UK, so it would be interesting to see if it's the same with you guys over there, um, more and more uh, couples wanting just the images on a disc and a stick, is it, I, we haven't discussed on how you, uh, on your packages, but we, we're not advocates of that, we still want to sell the album, we still want to sell the prints and stuff, do you have a way of combating it or do you simply just not offer it? Absolutely. So what I do, uh, I combat it in two ways. I'm not going to deny them the images because I think it's just a sign of the times when people want them. And it's kind of nice for me to not have the sole responsibility of holding on and keeping their images safe. But I only include it in my top three packages, which all include wedding albums. They can add it a la carte. But by the time they do add it a la carte to one of my lower packages, they're actually they're you know two hundred dollars away from getting a wedding album, so ninety nine percent of my clients end up with a wedding album. Yeah, and that's exactly how we would do it in our wedding business. Is that it's there, it is quite expensive, or we use it as an upsell tool. So if you move up the bracket in our package, then we will include, say the um, the images on disc or X amount of images on disc. So that's exactly the advice that we would have given as well. Um, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's the same over again. It's great being able to ask you questions that might be different over there. Quite big over here in the UK still are wedding fairs. Do you do you have them over there? And is it something that you take part in as a business? A wedding what? We have wedding fairs. So uh, okay. where yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously you know that they, they will have florists, they'll have dress designers, they'll have uh, venues, they'll have photographers. Is that something that that's big over in the states? And is it something that you take part in? It is. It is big here. We call them bridal shows, so just a little different, but yeah, wedding event expos and things like that. I personally don't do them anymore, but that's just because my business has grown out of the typical demographic that attends those shows. However, if you're just starting out or if you're in another part of the world or country, it is absolutely a, a good way to market your business. A lot of times you only need to book one job for it to have been worth it. 
it's quite interesting that um, somebody's actually asked, you know, the best way to, uh, uh, you know, apply Vanessa's advice in the UK. Well, I've listened to the whole webinar, hence I didn't really interrupt you. Um, and, and the information is, is spot on. But I don't think there are a lot of differences. I think that there might be different organizations over here that are slightly different to, the, to you over there, but they exist here. So everything that you've sh shared with us tonight, so anybody here in the UK, nothing that Helen, has, uh, Vanessa, that has shared with you, um, it applies, hands down. I mean, you know, we've had a successful wedding business and we'd still run it uh, for Mark running for over 25 years. And everything that Vanessa has shared, it's been fantastic what you have shared in such a short amount of time, actually. So I'll, I'll thank you if I don't forget to thank you later, but I'm sure I will. Um, <laughs> we've only got a few questions left, so which is good. So I'll, I'll, um, have you ever had a bride, uh, a bridal couple not want uh, photos posted until they had approved them so uh, on the day or, or blog wise everything that you've been talking about today and do you discuss that up front with the clients yes absolutely um, to, to both of those so I have it in my contract that I can post and you know that I have the right to essentially so they see it ahead of time and know that ahead of time and I usually discuss it with them also and let them know that I'll post on Facebook and that kind of thing and I've only really had one client that wanted to see the pictures beforehand, and I just worked it out with that particular client. Hey, sure, you can see them beforehand, and and we went from there, and it's worked out pretty well. Um, I, I think you mentioned, and uh, excuse me for not not being one hundred percent because I answer questions as we go through as well. Do, do you do you work with a second shooter? I do a second shooter and an assistant as well. All oh, right. Okay. Wow. So, is that is that a but that's a member of your team? That's, is that a because I know you have a fairly big team working for you. Is that a permanent second photographer in your employ, or do you use different second photographers? I use about three second photographers regularly because they're all business owners themselves and shoot their own weddings and shoot for other people. But I do have fairly static ones that know how to shoot for me. Excellent, because that's kind of leads on to my question, actually, because I was, I must admit, I didn't catch fully what you said about it earlier. Somebody was saying that, uh, that I, I think they're actually uh, on your, your side of the woods, because they're saying that the industry there is quite competitive with second shooters. Is there a way to make yourself more, uh, I guess everything you've said really is about networking, but how do I get more jobs as a second shooter, is they're saying, as they're saying. Is, mm. is there something that you would look for specifically? Well, a lot of people by me in my area in New Jersey tend to use Facebook groups to, again, network with other photographers and to find second shooters, whether it's last minute or ahead of time. So that's becoming pretty popular right now, just local photography Facebook groups interacting and getting shooters that way. And obviously, it's just a matter, and we do it here. Uh, you know, if if we have a big enough wedding, we uh, we actually look to the photographer academy members, and and they love the chance of of going out for a day with with our master photographers. Um, but we would still vet them. We would still be looking at their work. We'd be looking at their style, and we'd want to meet them just to make sure that they're presentable and approachable, and are obviously going to be good with the client, isn't it? And it's it's obviously make sure that they fit with you, isn't it? And they understand you as a photographer um, and what their oh, job yes. is on the day. Um, Absolutely. Didn't really talk about Twitter. Is that something that you don't use much, uh, your side? Most of my brides, because my demographic is a little bit older and still on Facebook, I, I do use Twitter, um, but I don't use it as actively. However, if you're, say, a photographer that photographs seniors in high school, you should most definitely be on Twitter because that is where those that demographic is. Brilliant. Uh, well, again, we used to, we find Twitter incredibly effective for the Photography Academy, but obviously we're talking about our training, which is slightly different. But we link our Facebook posts off to Twitter, like I know you mentioned uh, the the app that you use to to share your, your social networking. But Twitter's quite big over here. But I agree, we don't really do it for uh, our weddings. Uh, we have found uh, likewise that uh, that Facebook has been the one. But I soon to be Pinterest as well, as I will add that you really. Uh, lit that up for me tonight. That, that, so I've learned, uh, and I'm, I'm sure Mark is going to kill me for not getting onto it sooner than we have. And we don't actually, weirdly enough, as photographers, we don't pay that much. We look at it, but we've always shied away from Instagram. But you, you did mention that quite a bit tonight. So again, a, another one maybe I should now take another look at. Yes, and one with a younger demographic in it as well. So younger yeah. kids are Instagram, Twitter, and Snap or Snapchat right now. 
Brilliant. That's great. Oh, yeah, and Snapchat. Yeah, yeah I'm getting old. I thought I was young, but I'm getting old, to be fair. <laughs> um, okay, brilliant. Um, just want to reiterate, uh, like yourself, you, we have great friends uh, with Animoto, and we haven't really talked about it much, but Animoto is a massive, powerful sales tool, isn't it, uh, in any kind of photography business. I mean, when we adopted it, um, when we first started the Photographer Academy, uh, Mark showed me Animoto. We just fell in love with it because we were spending hours on slideshows for our clients, and it takes the time and mm -hmm. work out of it. But we create our wedding DVDs now. I'm sure, like you do, in sections. I know you work with with uh, wedding filmmakers as well. But you know, from a photographer's point of view, it's no better a tool that you can add. You know, uh, basically create your own wedding DVD or now download or usb or whatever it is and put a fantastic price on it and a, such a great product and such easy to use which uh, um, we could do we've done them they're all on the photography academy site we have a, a webinars dedicated to animoto and videos dedicated to animoto because it really did change our business in every element of photography not just the weddings so please please check out animoto if you're not using it you should do the animoto pro is the way to go because you're licensed then to use the music and you can go ahead and sell it I know you've still got the rest of your day ahead of you. Our day is pretty much over here in the UK. Um, but uh, everything that we've talked about tonight, you can find on the Photographer Academy uh, Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash the Photographer Academy. It's now quarter past seven, so my scheduled link that Vanessa prompted me to do will be there with the links to, to her website and the affiliate links. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for joining us tonight. Um, we've had lots of great feedback, really, really appreciative. Um, so uh, thanks from me to you. Thanks for everybody for joining us. Good night, everybody. I'm going to close the webinar. Thanks for joining us. Take care. Bye now. Bye, Vanessa. Bye.